What is up, guys? I am that boarding school dude. Welcome to another episode. I got something for you today. It's a school that we haven't done before. It's in Massachusetts. And, you know, I kind of get the feeling that it's like a really, really smart school with an amazing reputation. It's not that big. There's not many kids that go there. If you haven't guessed it by now, well, today we're going to be reviewing Rotten. Let's go. Okay, guys, welcome back. Thanks so much if you haven't done so already. As usual, please like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. It really means a lot. I really appreciate it. So thanks so much. Look, guys, I'm going to get right into it today. I'm pretty pissed off. And I'm very upset with how I'm acting right now. I just have a very hard time expressing my emotions, and I can't stop from yelling. Yeah. I'm like actually furious. I'm going to tell you why. Um, I have really bad vision. And because I have bad vision, I can't wear really cool sunglasses anymore because I have to wear prescription sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, two years ago, I was wearing Oakley's. And guess what? I just happened to have them here. Check this out. What do you think? Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Well, guess what? They're not really. I'm going to tell you why. You know what's a hell of a lot cooler than Oakley? Our very first sponsor. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This guy, this whole thing, guess what? We have a sponsor now. If your mind is blown, think how I feel. Oakley, they used to be cool when I was like 13. Yeah, I bought a pair two years ago. Why? Because, I don't know. I didn't really know anything else about the like cool sunglass industry. But guess what? Now I do. Vita Soul. Vita Soul Eyewear. Yeah, that's right. You heard it here first. This is the coolest fucking sunglass company that I've ever seen. I'm going to tell you why. Number one, their sunglasses are totally awesome. And they come in this like really cool, like, I guess it's bamboo. It's wood. I think it's bamboo. I'm down with bamboo, but let me show you what's inside cool little carrying case. Who doesn't like that? I do. Check these puppies out. I just went from a fucking 6 to a 6.5. Yeah, that's right. I did. These are called the Aspens. Can you imagine hitting the slopes with these bad boys on? Totally awesome. And guess what? If you purchase a pair of Vita Soul sunglasses, they will plant a tree in your name. And guess what? That also happens to be our special discount code. Guys, go to Vita Soul Eyewear, type in the code TREE, you will get a very special That Boarding School Dude discount. That's it. Amazing. Vita Soul. Totally awesome. Totally cool dude, too, when he reached out to me. I'm like, yo, love your sunglasses. Send me some pairs. He was like, done. Let's get back to what I do best, completely destroying boarding schools. Just kidding. Let's get back to Groton. Okay, so Groton located in Groton, Massachusetts. Uh, let me give you some quick facts about the school. Look, let me just tell you right out of the gate that when you hear the name Groton and you like see it spelled out, you immediately think, classy place. That's what I think when I see that. Let me give you some quick facts, and then we're going to get into a video, and we're going to see what's really going on behind the scenes. Okay, so approximately, well, first of all, it is a boarding school, uh, grades 8 through 12, approximately 382 students, 93 faculty, 85% of the students board, 15% of them are day students. The average class size of Groton is uh, 11, uh, the uh, 480 acres of the campus. They have a $380 million endowment. If you are a math genius like myself, um, that is approximately $1 million per student. Um, 28 states are represented in their student body. 23 countries are represented. 48% students of color, 13% international students, four to one student to teacher ratio. Here's where the good stuff comes into play. ACT scores, average 31. SAT composite score average, 14. 1825. Whoa. I mean, 
the average man that's ridiculous okay um from the very minimal research that i've done about groton everybody seems to say that academically it's like really intense there they have saturday classes and there's something else that's like really weird not weird but it's kind of cool i guess if you take advantage of it from what i understand believe like between the ninth and tenth grade year like the summertime you can actually take classes in the summer to get ahead for like the next year or years that's interesting i've never heard of a school offering like summer classes to get ahead i can only imagine that that is going to like drastically improve your chances of like getting into the college of your choice. And let me just also say this, that in the past four years, some of the top schools that Groton graduates have have gone to have included, and notwithstanding, but Georgetown, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, University of Chicago, MIT, Stanford. I don't know. That's a pretty good list if you're asking me. So Anyway, let's get into Groton and um, see what's what. Forgot to mention that the acceptance rate is around 11%. So it really doesn't matter anyway, because you're not getting in. I really like everything here. You get challenged in every course, even if if it's your strongest or your weakest. They take everything to your next level. Alabama? I didn't even know they spoke English in Alabama. That's amazing. I just enjoy my teachers so much, and they have their differences, and they bring out different parts of me in their different classes. What most strikes me about Groton students is how serious they are about their academics, and how much they love this place and care very much about it. I'm sure they do love this place. Let me tell you why, right out of the gate. One of the main things that I saw about Groton is that, like, the average cost of for a boarding school student there is around um, $58,000. The average financial aid grant is $46,000. Can you imagine being able to go to one of these like top boarding schools for 12 grand a year? I mean, that is ridiculous. So that's pretty amazing. Let's keep going. Really specialize in a particular area. You really have to extend yourself into a lot of areas of school life. It's not just in the classroom, it's outside the classroom. It's spending time with your teachers, it's spending time with your peers all day. It's wonderful. I have to say, the one class that really gets me going in the morning is Is sex ed. Important to Constitution class. We talked about things that are very relevant to today's society. For instance, today we talked about the Rodriguez versus San Antonio school district case, which was a case determining whether education is a fundamental right in our society. So just things like that really get you engaged with your classmates. It's a recasting of a Jewish festival in the sacred text because we have here. We not only cover uh, Christianity, but also Hinduism and Buddhism, Confucianism, Jangbo, and Islam. That's something you want to have as a I think the variety of classes kind of stands out and the requirements that. Okay. You guys notice how small that classroom is? I mean, they're like packed in there like sardines. And it has for us. From the green. My favorite class is Latin. And it's a two year requirement. And I don't think I would have taken or even looked at Latin. Latin is a two year requirement. I think I like that. I think I really like that. I'm not sure why yet, but I think that studying Latin in high school is an amazing foundation to um, a lot of things. I don't know what that is yet. Let me drink some more coffee. I'll get back to you. It hadn't been required for me. It's kind of like uncovering a secret code in class. This year I'm taking advanced math topics, which is um, more of an elective. We don't have a set curriculum. And I think that's really exciting because, you know, we only have like five people in my class. And- Guys, that's racist, okay? Uh, I know that this is a big hot topic these days about diversity and inclusion. And um, I only see Asians in this class. So um, 
I'm going to need to uh, send in the woke police on Groton immediately. I'm very offended. It's time to decide what we want to do. We have like the tools to learn it now, but now we get to explore. I think it's you. French is always my passion line, and it's just my passion has grown since I came to college. I have a passion for French women. I don't know about like. I don't know. I don't really think I have a passion for like conjugating like French verbs, but to each his own. The small size it helps you build relationships with your teachers. Which I have a quick story. I remember when I was in boarding school. We had these French exchange students come over and stay for like either two weeks or a month, something like that. Well, my 10th grade roommate, shout out Luke Donnelly, um, he took French. So by default, we had a French exchange student sleeping in our dorm room. And I'm sorry. Like, I know that, you know, all the best, like, perfumes and colognes, like, come from France, Parisian. This kid smelled so bad. And, like, it wasn't just him. It was, like, the entire, like, exchange program that came over from France. I mean, when they walked down the hall and you passed them, they, they smelled like onions. Okay? They stunk. They Look, you've heard it here first, guys. They don't wear deodorant, okay? They stink. Really enjoyed because of the CEO of the brothers did Peter Hans' business. So, so I think teachers are always the, the kids who didn't want to give up going to school. Um, so they are all people with a commitment to their particular subject matter. And I think that's probably the nerds denominator is that we're people who are excited about the subjects we teach. <laughs> Sometimes people ask, well, don't you get bored teaching American history year after year? And my answer is no, no more than we would get. I would never get bored teaching American history. How could you ever get bored of teaching the greatest country on earth? I don't know. Playing basketball game after game after game because each class is always different. There's something very special about the students here. Um, part of it is that they're very committed to their work. They have a passion for learning. And I think part of it also is getting to know them. Getting Guys, comment down below. Does she have a French-Canadian accent or like a French-France accent? I, I think that sounds French-Canadian to me. I'm not sure. But I bet you there's an inside joke at Groton about all like the male faculty members who are single. I bet they all want to smash her. Is that just me? I don't know. I think it's a bullseye. To get close to them. I think that makes it very special. I find that the faculty to student relationships are unbelievable. It was just a new thought to think that. Sounds weird. So close to faculty members. Like Mr. Morgan and I are really close. James, so we definitely the ideas. A student who has come here and just from the beginning always tried her best. I think we're alike in a lot of ways. I think we are both like really academically driven, but at the same time, we have this love of music that really drives us. Yeah, I don't know. If I was making this video, I probably would have edited that little piece out. It just sounds weird. When I went to boarding school, there was a teacher at my school, and this is like extremely taboo. Um, but like, like there was like, you know, like, like rumblings about like him and like a female student, and like you know, and like I don't know if anything ever happened, but like you would hear like really weird things, like oh they were playing piano together, and the guy would be like oh like your fingers uh, are. And touching that ivory uh, so um you know uh, softly or, but i don't know there's something about like music teachers that are like kind of creepy is that just me teacher is floyd taylor who's also my squash coach and i've gotten to know him through math obviously he is enthusiastic about math which helps rub off on the class then once the winter came around we got down to the courts with him so you can hit him higher so you can take him out of the air i mean these kids uh uh such interesting kids. They care about 
how they live their lives, and having them on the athletic field or the courts that I have is at least as important as having them in the classroom. It's a chance to actually touch kids' lives in more ways than just kind of teach them um, about logarithms in the classroom. The thing I love the most about Broad are my friends. While some of them might be from yeah, bro. Like Hong Kong, or Korea, or from Oregon, we all think in- <laughs> He said, yeah, like Hong Kong, Korea, Oregon. Like, Oregon is some, like, foreign place. I guess it is. I mean, now it is. I mean, it's like... Yeah, like, there's something about Oregonians. Like, like these people are nuts. Even though with such vastly different people, every single day I'm running through my friends. What was that place called, that, like, autonomous zone in, like, Portland called? What was that place called? Chaz? Chaz? Imagine being like, yeah, I'm from Chaz. My students are remarkably talented, and I think any, any teacher who is uncomfortable with the idea that they're teaching students who are smarter than they are is not going to be comfortable with that for very long. So yeah, you definitely feel like there is other people you can learn a lot from. You're not the only smart kid in the room. My motivation comes from the students around me, because they are all striving to be the best that they can be, and you don't have to hide like your drive. You want to compete. It's a healthy competition. We have um, teachers who are professionals. We have teachers who are well accomplished in their field that motivate students to achieve at even higher levels. The challenge is awesome, actually. I kind of glided through public school. It wasn't too difficult, but here you are pushed and everyone pushes each other. Brian definitely pushed me to um, step out of my comfort zone, and I'm really glad for it because now that I've had all these leadership opportunities, now. Yeah, well, if the average SAT score is 1425, that's pretty competitive. I mean, they're, I'm sure they're getting. Yeah, I mean, that's. I feel like I can take on that role as I move on. It's not Being at Groton, I definitely see how classes here can help me get to where I want to be. I have never gone a week in Groton without just being amazed at one moment or another by the genius of the kids around me. Yeah, like if you're really smart, I bet this place would be like really good for you to go to. Probably wouldn't be good for like someone like myself to go to because I would just be like goofing off a lot. I don't know. Place looks nice though. Nice. All right, let's check out one more. Like, I already like this video more. Like, this one's, you know, I don't know. It's just cooler. Nice. Picturesque. Let's check this one out. There are so many more stories than you think there are. I am from Charlotte, North Carolina. I live in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. I'm from South Africa. I'm from Santa Barbara, California. My mom is Lebanese and my dad is Puerto Rican. Nice building. I thought you'd find that a kid is not identified by where they come from, but by their force. You have to change who you are when you come here. There is no perfect student. You are your own perfect student. Yeah, I'm just going to come right out and say that I honestly don't believe that. I feel that like so many of these boarding schools have become like so progressive and so woke that if you were like a conservative student or you had like conservative values, I don't even, I don't, I don't know if you would be accepted. I really don't. Um, I'm not saying that that is, you know, 
specific to Groton. I think it's I think it's all of them. I mean, there's just this like wave of wokeness coming on that if you have like traditional values, man, I think that you would be shunned. That's just my personal opinion. You guys comment down below. You definitely face challenges, but you know the whole time that you have people to fall back on. When you turn it, it's the way you find yourself. And it's where you'll find the people who are closest to you and care the most. The relationships that we've cultivated here are going to be ones that last for a lifetime. My advisor reached out to me, got turned into a really tight relationship. I've definitely found my family here. If you come to Groton, you'll experience things That's that cool. change your life forever. You will give travel talks. You will start your own club. You will write your own play and see it performed. You will be a peer counselor. When I leave this place, I'll I will be a Chad. Ready to influence the world one person at a time. I will be able to take on life however I am wants. I will be ready to face the world. Great video. Very inspiring. Okay, so a couple quick videos from Groton right there. And guys, look, like I said, I'm going to score this on a curve. Because one of the videos was not put out by Groton, it was like students doing it, and it was like during COVID, and like, I don't know, like, I really try to give these schools like a fair shake, and I don't feel like I would be giving them a fair shake um, by like scoring them on like what I saw during COVID, and like having to socially distance and wear masks. Look, I mean, that's just temporary, it sucks. I'm scoring it on a curve, period, end of story. I'm sparing you guys having to watch the whole thing with their masks on and whatnot. But like, like I saw the athletic fields, I saw the dorms, I saw this, I saw that, whatever. Um, taking everything into consideration um, that I saw that I'm not going to bore you guys with, um, you're more than welcome to go onto their website and watch that whole like video or go on YouTube and watch that whole video of like the two students doing it. Yeah. I mean, like I would, I I would personally feel really lucky to go there because I feel like it's so selective that just by getting in there, I just have this feeling that you're going to be surrounded by some like really remarkable people, really inspiring people. And I don't think you find that at a lot of schools. Like I think a lot of schools, although selective, like the filtration system that's generally at work like a lot of these schools let in like legacy kids and like, you know, just because they're a legacy kid, they may take the place of someone who might be like really well qualified, you know, to be admitted, you know, like a lot of Chad's and Brad's and, you know, Karen's can get into these schools um, just because like their parents went there or they can, there you are full paying families. I mean, there's a number of different reasons, but when you're only a le like, admitting 11% of your applicants, man, that is like, that's gotta be one of the lowest ones. I think it's lower than like Exeter or Andover. I think it is. I mean, that's like, wow, man, that's, uh, but there was some things that like, I kind of saw about it that like, I didn't think were that great. Um, like it's kind of small. The campus is picturesque. It's really nice, but it's like in a circle. Like the whole thing is kind of, I don't know, like in the middle of the campus, there's just like one big green circle kind of field yard thing where all the students kind of, it's like a quad, but it's a circle. It's really nice. Like all the buildings look really nice and cool. And yeah, it's really nice. I'm giving it, let me back up. That boarding school, dude, Groton, 8.9. Yep, 8.9. I mean, that that is an amazing score. Let me just come right out and say, but I feel like, it's worth it. I think there's some probably some things that can make it go even higher. But uh, from some of the other videos that I watched that I didn't put it put in this so that you guys wouldn't have to be like overwhelmed with a super long video. Um, you know, kind of a little bit to me look like an Abercrombie and Fitch ad. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that's bad. Um, I'm just saying that uh, I'm super confident with that score 8.9 groton great school high sats low 
like small classes. Um, kind of would would have liked to have seen a little bit more about their competitiveness in their athletics. Um, super competitive for academics. Didn't see too too much about extracurriculars. Although, look, they ranked top twenty in the school in the country and you know, high SAT scores, low acceptance rate, high endowment, most AP courses offer, blah, 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 that kind of thing. So I don't know. I think it's a good score and I think it's totally fair. I'll finish by saying this. It would be in the nines if their marketing department put something out that was um, a little bit more new and relevant. They don't have much like media that you can look at like on YouTube or Vimeo or their website, uh, you know, it was a little sparse. So guys, put something out new. That boarding school dude put you in the nines, probably. Anyway, guys, I took a little break. I'm back. I'm back with a vengeance. Okay. So there'll be some more coming out soon. Stick around. And most importantly, don't forget, be the soul I wear. I mean, look, totally cool. You're going to look great in it. Probably be the last pair of sunglasses you'll ever have to buy. Don't forget, special discount code, TREE. Who doesn't like trees? I know I do. Anyway, thanks. See you.